Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, the Holy Spirit will have me remind us, will have me reinforce, reiterate what we need to do to stay in our victory lane. Praise the Lord. You see, life has its we look at life, you know, from now going on. The truth is that you and I, apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, who we are holding on to, and we know, as Pastor Charles taught us last week, that he, his is from eternity past to eternity future. Hallelujah. He doesn't deal in number of years. His is eternity spread all out. And we know that he is the one that we're holding on to. So we know what our end is. Praise the Lord. We know what our end is. But how will we get to that end? Hmm. Nobody knows. That is the truth. How long we have before we get and step into that eternity season, we do not know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there's this wonderful actor who just died at 43, and he was sick. I'm sure from all that I've read about him and learned about him, that he knew of God, and I know that around him people were praying and asking God to heal him. I'm sure he was also praying. But for some reason, God decided to call him home sooner than most people. And we're talking about a time and a period where you say that, you know, there are lots of medical advances. You know, some people think you can keep them alive for, for 300 years. Medical advances, is it money? He had the money to buy whatever medical advances he had. He was a rich actor, he wasn't a poor actor. But that did not keep him alive. My brothers and my sisters, to stay in the victory lane is all down to Jehovah. Praise the Lord. It is all down. He was a man of purpose. Praise the Lord. Just like Jesus was a man of purpose and he only spent 33 years. So it's not so much the number of years. It is what you do with it. Hallelujah. How you stay in the victory lane. Praise the name of Jesus. And today that is just what the Holy Spirit would have me remind each and every one of us. How do we remain and how do we stay? in the victory lane. Praise the Lord. So I just want us to read, um, turn your Bibles with me. Still in the Psalms, we're going to look, go into Psalm 44. Praise the name of Jesus. Psalm 44. Hallelujah. Brother Eric, God bless you. That song that my hallelujah belongs to you is just ringing in my head. Hallelujah. Ringing in my head as, as, a, as this service is going on. That was an on-point worship song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you, Lord. So Psalm 44, and I'm going to read verses 1 to 8. We have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. I want to pause there. We know that the children of Israel fought battles. But here they are making a declaration in verse 3. It says, it is not by their sword 
that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. Hallelujah. It says, it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. Hallelujah. I think it's in First John where he says that, look, the love that God has for us, no one can, can quantify it. Hallelujah. We, but if God gives us time, we will look at that reference. Because you loved them. Verse 4. This is the children of Israel now declaring. It says, you are my king and my God who decrees victories for Jacob. Hallelujah. God decrees victories for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 5. Through you, through Jehovah, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. Yes, God has armed us with our minds, with our sense, with our thinking faculties. He has armed us with intellect. Some of us, he has armed with eloquence. But we're saying in the name of Jesus, it is not those things that gives us victory in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not. But it is Jehovah who gives us victory over our enemies. Hallelujah. It is God that put our adversaries to shame. Praise the Lord. Therefore, we all say, as in verse 8, in God we make our boast all day long and we praise Jehovah's name forever and ever. Amen? Praise the Lord. Keeping in the victory lane. One thing, one sure thing is to know that you are not the one that has planted you on the course that you are running. It is God that has done it. Hallelujah. So holding on to him, praise the Lord. What I have said is that to stay in the victory lane, you have, you need to place your hand in the hand of him who knows the way and follow. Hallelujah. So if you place your hand, you, you know, as you see those little children with their, you know, with their holding the hands of, the, of their parent or an older adult and walking on the high street, you see the little children with their little steps. You don't know whether they are running or, or walking because the pace of the adult is relatively fast and they are just trying to keep up, but they hold on and they follow. And I'm sure you've seen others where the Parent, the older adult is trying and the child is resisting, dragging and screaming. We've seen all those scenarios. But the scenario you and I need to see in our mind's eye and we need to follow is the one of the little child who is holding the older adult's hand and just going where God leads them. Hallelujah. That is the key thing of staying in the victory lane. I want to tell a story. This is a real life story. Praise the Lord. This man, he's called Eric Liddell. Hallelujah. He's a Scottish man. And in those days, and this was in 1924. So he, he competed. This was in the 1920s. I think he was born in 1908. But in 1924, he now competed for the Olympics. Now, he was a very talented man. And his parents were missionaries. So he was in boarding school in England at that time. Now what happened was at the um, 1924 Olympics, he had been training for the 100 meter race. That's what he was training for. That was his, that was his race. That was his skill. And that was what he was going for. And everyone in that time expected him to win. Now when he got to the uh, Olympic, I think it was the Paris Olympics then, in 1924, he found out that the 100 meters race was scheduled on a Sunday. He did not think, he did not believe he could honor God by running a race on the Lord's day. That was his faith. That was his belief. Remember the Bible tells us in Romans 14, 23, that anything acts that we do outside of faith is sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he thought, no way, I'm not going to run. There is no way I'm going to run. And you know what happened? Of course, they turned against him. Everyone that was for him was now against him. 
there was such a wrath that was unleashed on him, the press of the day, and all those people turned it, but he held on to his stance. What happened was that now out, out of the blues, somebody else, for whatever reason, now pulled out of the 400 meters race. And Eric was offered that race. He took it. Now remember, Eric had been training for 100 meters, not 400 meters. The training for that distance is very different from the training for a long race, but he took it anyway. The long and short of it is that he ran the 400 meters and it was in the 400 meters that he won the gold medal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only did he win the gold medal, he set a new record in that time. He actually won the race at that time with 47.6 seconds. It is a true life story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, in this journey of life, we do not know what tomorrow brings, but we know who holds tomorrow. That is why our prayer meeting on Thursday, where we used Isaiah 42.16 to pray, is really relevant. It says that he will lead the blind by ways they have not known. It says along on familiar paths, he will guide them. It says that he will turn the darkness into light. Hallelujah. And he will make the rough ground smooth. Praise the Lord. He ends it. He said, I, the Lord, I will do this for them and I will not forsake them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Eric took his stand. He took his stance and he stood his ground because he made it on a faith principle that he believed in. God gave him an opportunity and made him a leader. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, not only did he earn a gold medal, he made an uncompromisingly, an uncompromising stand for his faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, people thought that he had, many people thought he had lost it that he was on the victory rate lane of his career. But then he chose to give it up. But God who leads the blind by ways they have not known, the one who makes rough places smooth, the one that turns darkness into light, he found a way for Eric, not only to win a gold medal, but also to make a stand for his faith. And you know, he went on in that Olympic to get the bronze in the 200 meter race. God did not let him go empty-handed. When you stay in the victory lane, you will never go empty-handed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He put his hand in God's hand and he followed. And he ended up being victorious. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I believe that there are, call it principles, some people will say keys, but I believe there are certain things as children of God that we need to do and we need to be aware of to remain on the victory lane. I believe that strongly. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what I want to share with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to use another story. Hallelujah. It's story time, but I think the stories tell a lot of, they bring the meaning home. They tell a lot of the facts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But this story that we're going to tell now is found in the Bible. And I have chosen the story, one of a story around David. Why? Because David was a warrior. David knew what it was to win. David knew what it was to go into battle. And not only that, David is one person that was called a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, David is somebody whose successes, his weaknesses, the times when he was really happy and the times when he felt really low is there for everyone to see. It, it, it's, it, the Psalms tell the stories of when he was in his lowest ebb to when he was, you know, really riding high from God's victory and God's presence. So I think his story resonates with each and every one of us, the person that he was resonates with each and every one of us. And it's good to find out what, what was it about his life that made him stay on the victory lane. Praise the Lord. Amen. And with this, I want you to turn with me to the book of Samuel, First Samuel, 
First Samuel, praise the Lord. I'm looking for it myself. First Samuel 30. And I want to read very quickly from verses 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it. Verse 2. And had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. Verse 6, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Hallelujah. Amen. And David said to Abiatar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiatar brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them. The Lord answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there because I believe we all know the story. We know that David pursued. We know that David won. We know that David conquered, retrieved everything. Nothing was lost. He recovered everything and more. That we know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But what we're looking at now is what are the things that we need to do to stay in the victory lane? The first thing I've said is that you just have to know that it is God that has planned your purpose, and it is God that has put you on your race. Hallelujah. Amen. He says the race that has been marked out for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what he says in Hebrew. God has marked out your race. God has marked out your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. So stay where God has marked you. And that is the first thing. And when you stay there, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have challenges. This is David who was winning wars with his band. Of, some people call them vagabonds because the, he picked them up. These are outlaws that he had gathered and have made into men of valor, disciplined men who knew how to fight and take orders. He had groomed them. Hallelujah. His leadership as a you know, his leadership skills as a king was very evident that he took all these outlaws and all these outcasts and he had made them fighting men. Hallelujah. And here they were in tears. Here they were, they faced an obstacle. You and I, we face this constantly in our daily works, in our daily lives. We come be and we, are, we come to a, a place and the challenge wants to blow our head up. But how do we stay winning? How do we stay in the victory lane? The first thing that we do is to turn to God for strength. Hallelujah. And that was what David said. He said, David found strength in the Lord, his God. He says he encouraged himself. You see, we cannot find strength in something that we don't have a relationship with. Hallelujah. Amen. So it goes without saying. That day by day, moment by moment, you're in conversation, you're in touch with your maker, you're in touch with Jehovah God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because when you come to that crossroad, when you come to that place, when you are distressed and you do not know what to do, the Bible, our promise today tells us that God is near to all those who call on him, to all those who call on him in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So it means that you cannot but call on him. And when you call on him, he will strengthen you. Praise the Lord. That is the first thing. Turn to the Lord for strength. He said, bring me the ephod. That was turning to the Lord for strength. Praise the Lord. So to stay in your victory lane, to stay in that lane of victory and purpose that God has assigned you, you're constantly turning to Jehovah for strength. That is what David did. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then turn to God for strategy. You know, that is why I love David a lot. I love stories about him. Because even though he was constantly winning wars, he never assumed he knew it all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we don't have time to go into a detailed study. But if you look at the study of Best Samuel and you look at study you know, Second Samuel, you also study First and Second Kings. You will find out that when David was at war, he always asked God, shall I go? He would have gone and, you know, really um, won a great victory. And he's about to launch in the other one. He never thought to himself, I have it all. The strategy is all there. Never. He always asked, shall I go? How do I go? And you would find out that there are stories where God would tell him, this time, I want you to do an ambush. Go around here, get your men stationed here, do this, and he will go and he'll win the war. He said, this time, this is how I want you to do it. He always turned to the Lord for strategy. And he did the same in this case. He said, shall I go up after that? Shall I pursue? Will I recover all? And God said, yes, go. You will pursue you will recover. Praise the Lord. It you. takes me back to our promise for today, where God has clearly said that when we call upon him, he will answer us. Hallelujah. Amen. He will answer those that fear him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Hallelujah. And the last thing that I want to say, I mean, there are many, but let me pick on these three. I think if we practice these three to start with, God will expand and he will allow, give us more insight into so many other things. The third one is this. It says, give the same grace you expect to someone while you are on your journey. And this I take from the story of that suffering, that Egyptian slave that had been left to die. Because each time I get to this story, I just wonder, yeah, when you are really busy, you know you hate someone to interrupt you. I know that. Because I'm busy at work. I'm trying to finish off a report. And one of my nurses will come to my office, knock, knock, and is like, okay, I'm busy. You know, in my mind, in my mind, you know. But I remember, I remember this story. I remember this story that David paused to look after someone on a journey to recover what he had stolen. I remember it. And when I remember it, I pause. I stop my typing and I turn around and I give them my attention. That is what, it doesn't mean that it doesn't come, but I remember the story. And I believe that if we remember the story, that even while we are running our race, and there is someone that is in need of something that we can offer. We need to pause, attend to it. Let us allow ourselves to be interrupted on that journey. And God will sort it out because the Egyptian had knowledge that helped David reach his goal. You never know who it is. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not saying that's your motive for doing it. Your motive is just to help somebody who needs your attention at that time. But the thing is this, that that Egyptian happened to have knowledge that helped David to get his victory. So these are the things that I want to share with us today. These are the things that I believe the Holy Spirit is asking me to reinforce in your journey, your journey of life, to stay in your victory lane. One of it, go to God for strength. Let him be the strength. The other one, seek him, turn to him for strategy. And the other one, allow yourself to be interrupted on that journey to grant grace.
to somebody else who might need grace as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you and I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah, I worship you because there is none like you. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. Yep. You are our all in all. The same yesterday, today, and forever. As you did victories, Father God, for your saints of old. Father God, you will win those victories for us even now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Father God, in this journey of life, in this journey of life, oh Lord, we hold your hand and we just follow you. We hold your hand, Jehovah, and we just follow you. We just follow you. We know, oh Lord, that victory awaits us. We know, Jehovah, that we will dance that victory dance. Oh, Karabusa. We will sing that victory song. We know, Lord, that our hallelujah, <laughs> no matter how many they are, no matter how, 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 how resounding they are, they all belong to you. Even when our bodies are weak, and the hallelujah is but a bare whisper. Father, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you, Lord. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise because we know, we know that victory is our portion as we stay on our victory lane. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the strategy. Thank you for the grace Alleluia. to allow ourselves to be interrupted on that journey. Alleluia. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. 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 I sense that somebody has received their deliverance today. Alleluia. And I'm grateful to God. I actually have goosebumps all over my body. Thank you, Lord. So I know that somebody, somebody who has heard this today, has received that insight into their deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm grateful to God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords. Mm. And I just want to say to you who is listening today and may not know who the Lord Jesus is, or you might come across this tape at some other time. I just want to let you know that it is only in Christ Jesus that you can fulfill and be assured of your victory as you run this ways of life. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 10 says, after you have suffered a little while, that God himself is the one that will restore you. He will complete you, make you strong, and make sure you reach your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 42, 16, the end of it says, I, the Lord, will do these things. I will not forsake them. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the things God has planned for those who love him. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I'm just trying to say to you that it is only in Christ. And I want to welcome you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So just say after me, Father, Father I, come before you I come before you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, acknowledge I acknowledge his death on the cross. On the cross. I, acknowledge I acknowledge his resurrection. His resurrection. I, acknowledge I acknowledge that that was done, that that was done for me. For me. I receive that, I now, receive that now, and I thank you. And I thank you. And Lord. I thank you that my past is swept away. I thank you that my past is swept away. And I said that all things have become new. And that all things have become new. Thank you, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord. That God, you have placed me. That you have placed me on my lane. On my lane. And I will be victorious. And I will be victorious. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, and you want more support. Just get in touch with Fountain of Life Church London. If you Google us, you will find our details online. But you can just send an email to admin at toflc.org.uk. I think I got that wrong. You see, that's why I don't like saying these things. The Fountain of Life Church, T-F-O-L-C, hallelujah, Amen. at T-F-O-L-C. Dot org dot uk hallelujah Amen. please put the dot uk otherwise it will end up at 
um, the headquarters. And that's fine. Somebody will get in touch with you. But if you're based in London and you want us to get in touch with you, Pika, just put the dot UK. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe this is a good time for us to give to God our tithe and our offering. It's a good time to say, Father, thank you because you're always there. Because mm -hmm. it's out of the much he has given us that we give him just a little. You cannot pay God, so you don't pay tithe. You, you cannot pay. What, what have you done? What, have you, what, what, what is it that you can pay God for? Oh, thank you, Sister Diola, for putting it on the, on the chat. You know, admin at the fountain of life church .uk. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. What, what, what is it that you have, you know, what are you, what has, what are you going to pay God for? How, can you pay for your life? I don't understand. So we, we give. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a gift that we give out of gratitude for the many things God has done for us. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. So this is the time to do it. And I'm just going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you for everyone that's given of the substance that you have already given, Father God, given their tithes, given their offering. Father God, the blessings that come by of being a giver, let that blessings cover them in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Let the abundance of your goodness the abundance of your mercy, the abundance of your grace. Father God, let it characterize their life in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Let your favor, Father God, that is their, that, let your favor constantly be their defense Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father God, Alan. for the gift that they bring. And Father, we thank you that the gift will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom Amen. here on earth Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you for your gifts thank and God you, bless Lord. you. Hallelujah. Prayer meeting starts on Thursday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So join us on Thursday at 8 o'clock via Instagram. And God will definitely be there to hear us once again hallelujah Amen. he never tires of hearing from us so let us come together as we always do to cry out to him and we know that he will hear us in the mighty name of jesus amen, amen. our god is good hallelujah. i just want you to say something very quickly to yourself and say i'm running a race i'm running a race that i am destined, to, I'm win. destined to win i'm running a race i'm running hey, a race. Hey, that i'm destined to win I'm